Welcome to something to talk about. Welcome to something to talk about. Hi, welcome to something to talk about. My name is Taco, and let's close up Mister Week. We've had a we've had a hoot and a holler with Kerwin and Coleman, and now we're heading up Benifer. That's right, not Jennifer, Grandmaster Benifer. Is this an excuse for me to talk about Arya Targaryen? Yes. Is it also an excuse for me to talk about Maegor the Cruel? Yeah. Is it an excuse for me to cover Arya Targaryen and Maegor the Cruel without making gigantic videos because their characters are both way bigger than Benefers? Yes. Now you're starting to see what we're doing here. <laughs> this is what's going on. Um, go ahead, pause this, read this. Um, spoilers for this character and for Fire and Blood, um, where this character comes from. So... Yeah, um, Maester Benefer. So a uh, Grand Maester Benefer is from Fire and Blood. So it's a little further back. Um, ew, excuse me, I'm burping. Uh, yeah, so let's. Why do I need to tell you where this takes place? I'm about to tell you where it takes place. All right, Benefer. Um, we never get a real description of Benefer. So this is normally the slide where I tell you what the guy looks like and sounds like and acts like, but we don't really get that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we never really get a real description of Benefer, uh, thanks to the nature of Fire and Blood, of how it's written, it being a history book. And also, since he is a maester, we uh, know it, nothing about his background. We don't know his last name, any of that. Um, we do know that he sucked at writing stuff down. So, yeah, he's a dude. <laughs> the, like, most important thing he's a part of, we hear about it from somebody else. <laughs> So you're the write down stuff guy. You're a maester. You should be writing stuff down. And he's like, no, it's not my style. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be the final time I'm reading this this week um, until I cover my next maester. Um, order of the maesters. The uh, maesters are an order of scholars, healers, and messengers, and scientists. They educate new students at the Citadel, which is in uh, Old Town, uh, the uh, city in the Reach. Um, a city in the Reach. The oldest city in the re Reach, one could say. The oldest town. Um, House Hightower was integral in the um, Citadel's foundation and continues to uh, um, support the Order as advisors to uh, the Westerosi nobility. The Maesters have uh, largely supplanted the Alchemist Guild. They are sometimes called the Knights of the Mind. Um, a Maester can be recognized by the chain he wears around his neck. The color is intended to remind the maester of the realm he serves. The links of the chain can be made of every metal known to man. Each link signifies a subject he has mastered. There you guys go. So make her the cruels, maesters. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Oh, man. Um, uh, we need to start with go in. So this is a maester that we're starting with. This is maester week. We're going to get a lot of maesters in this video, all right? This is Maester Week, and I'm picking a Maester that gives me an excuse to talk about mini Maesters. <laughs> they all have something in common. We need to start with Gawen, who served as Grand Maester for King Aegon the First Targaryen, succeeding Grand Maester Linus, yeah, in 12 AC. He and Han Osmond Strong were charged with rising the walls of King's Landing. That's cool, Gowen. Um, he continued to hold the office for Grand Maester for the reign of Aegon the First heir, King Aenys Targaryen. When Aenys fell ill at Dragonstone and died in 41 AC, Gowen failed to save the 35-year-old King's life following the death of Aenys, the um, elderly and gray-haired Gowen, um, protested the coronation of Aenys' half-brother by his mother, Visenya Targaryen. We're talking about Maegor here, of course. Um, Gwyn stated that following the laws of inheritance, the crown should pass to Aenys' older son, Prince Aegon, Aegon the Young Crown. Maegor beheads Gwyn for his protest with Blackfire. So, for those of you who think that Maegor wasn't evil until after the Trial of Seven... Uh, ugh. ask Gwyn. Gwyn got killed for just literally following the rules. Oh, Gwyn's maester was being controlled by high towers. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so after Gwyn's death, Gwyn, um, Gwyn, 
uh, there were no further protests at Dragonstone. Myros was called up next. Come on, Myros, get in here. The water's warm. Following the victory uh, at the Battle of the Great, Great Fork, Magor declared his intent to take on another wife and marry Tyena of the Tower as his third wife. Myros the, um, dared to speak against the marriage openly, stating that Magor's true wife is Ceres Hightower, who waited him in Old Town. So uh, Magor uh, heard him out in silence. He's like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, all right, cool, yeah. Um, before drawing Blackfire and killing him where he stood. <laughs> Yay. The next guy, Desmond. If I was Desmond, I would be like, can I not? They're like, hey, you're going to be... Do you think the Maesters got rid of Arch Maesters they didn't like? Like, you think Desmond was just a jerk? No one liked him? And they're like, the, the guy who murdered the last two Maesters needs a Maester. And they're like, Desmond, he sucks. <laughs> And, and it's like, hey, it's Desmond. He's like, dang it, guys. And they're all like, well, you shouldn't keep the, you keep leaving the toilet seat up, dude. No one likes you. You are a horrible roommate here at the Citadel and you eat all of our food, even though we wrote our names on it. Enjoy being Grammys, the sucker. <laughs> all right. Um, where was I? Besides kicking my computer. Um, uh, um uh, yeah, so... Uh, Desmond is up to bat. Oh, no. After Queen Alice Haraway goes into premature labor in 44 AC, Desmond assisted in the, in the delivery when the queen gives birth to a severely deformed stillborn child. The furious Magor blames everyone who had insisted in the delivery, and the king eventually ordered the executions of Alice herself, um, her lord father Lucas, and her septas and midwives, and of course, Desmond. <sighs> you can't win. You can't win. All right. Hey, who, who is this video about? Oh, yeah. Better for her. Let's go. <laughs> the um, ascension of a King Jerry. Good old King Jerry. I call King Jerry's for you new guys here. I call him King Jerry. He's not old King Jerry. He's not old Jerry here. He's young Jerry. Um, Jerry. What a Jerry. All right, um, Bedifer became Grand Maester after the execution of Grand Maester Desmond. Um, Benny uh, serves under Magor for a surprising four years. Wow. When Magor decides to take another wife, Bedifer suggests, uh, instead of complaining this time, he's like, here, I'll even help you pick one. Uh, he suggests a match with Lady um, uh, Clarice Dane. Clarice. Um, <laughs> of uh, Starfield in hopes of... Uh, detaching her lands and house from Dorne. That's pretty funny. In so, man, he's playing the game even. Um, in 48 AC, when the realm had enough of Magor's tyranny and were flocking to join the support, um, the claim put forth by Prince Jerry, Jaharis, Magor ordered Grand Maester Benefer to send forth his raven, summoning all of Magor's Liege Lords, Leo Lords, and Bannerman to King's Landing. Benefer, instead of doing that, abandons Magor and secretly fled on a ship to Pentos. Upon Magor's death, the new king, Jerry, uh, the young king, Jerry I Targaryen, Jerry Targaryen, sent an invitation to Benefer asking him to return to King's Landing. Although Benefer was fearful he might be executed for treason, it's treason, then. Um, he doesn't. He returns and was reinstated as Grand Maester. So cool, let's go. Grand Maester. Arya Targaryen. Wait, what? He's finally Grand Maester. Do we not get to talk about Benefer? Nope. <laughs> Arya Targaryen. You see her? She's the little tiny dot touching that giant dragon's tooth. Jesus. Skipping ahead. Arya Targaryen is living with her mom and elder and the elder sister of Jaehaerys, Queen um, Reyna Targaryen, Dreamfire Reyna, rightful queen of the Seven Kingdoms, on Dragonstone. By 54 AC, she was very unhappy with her mother. Um, Arya just dis uh, disappeared from Dragonstone towards the end of the year, claiming 
and flying away on Balerion. Wow! Arya's, or Arya's mother, Queen Reyna, had believed that Arya had returned to King's Landing, but upon arrival at King's Landing, um, found that Arya had not been seen. Ravens were sent all to all the lords of the Seven Kingdoms to report any sighting of Arya or Balerion the Black Dread. Most reports proved useless, and none gave the desired result. Meanwhile, Reyna flew her own dragon, Dreamfire, across the Seven Kingdoms in search of Arya. Um, as there were no signs of um, Arya, Jerry began to fear she was dead, telling his small council that it was likely Balerion had thrown her off her back. Arya and Balerion were missing for more than a year, and they returned to King's Landing on the 13th day of the fourth moon of 56 AC. Remember, they flew off in 54. Wow. Um, with a severely ill Arya Targaryen clenching the back of the dragon. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll get to it. So, like I said... Benefer, because of the nature of fire and blood, we don't really know too much about Benefer. We just know about the major events that he was a part of. And those major events are the end of Megor the Cruel's reign. And then I covered all of the other maesters beforehand. And then this. And then the last thing, which we'll get to. So that's why I'm talking so much about Arya Targaryen, because this is the next time that Benefer gets brought up. And actually, the only art we have for Benefer is from this. And everybody and their mom has talked about Arya Targaryen. Um, every A Song of Ice and Fire YouTuber, not everyone, but most of them, have done a video on this. And, you know, I was bound to do it one of these days. Um, and today's that day. All right. That bowler is you. Um, Aria's return. She was almost unrecognizable, being stick thin, and whatever clothes she still wore were nothing more than tatters. Her hair was matted and a tangled mess, and her eyes were bloody. After speaking, the only word she says is, I never. That's all she gets to say. Arya collapsed. Um, the princess was carried to Benefer by Sir Lucamore Strong. I did cover Lucamore Strong really long ago. He's one of the first characters I ever covered, um, Lucamore the Lusty. Um, but yeah, he does pick her up, and then um, brings, yeah, so, so um, yeah, uh, of the King's Guard. So Sir Sir Lucamore said that the princess's fever was so hot that he could feel it through his armor. Wow. She had a blood in her eyes and her body had, quote, something inside her, something moving. Wow, the knight said. Benefer, this is who this video is supposed to be about, treated area uh, in his chambers with Septim Barth. Septim Barth. I believe it might be Hand of the King at this time. Uh, I believe so. I don't need to go look at it. Either way, he's whether or not he's Hand or not, he is still a very trusted advisor of um, Jaehaerys at this point in his reign. And yeah, Septim Barth is just a... He's not High Septim or anything, he's just a Septim that, um, that Jerry just really likes who gets sent to King's Landing to look over um, the, uh, the library and then just stays and then eventually becomes hand of the king if you guys don't know who barth is so barth and benifer benny and barth um party on benny party on barth <laughs> trying to lift up the mood um are treating this young girl who has monsters crawling around inside her right jeez um yeah uh where was I? So they treated, yeah, with Septim Barth, um, who had been summoned to administer the rites of her dying. So he's just there to summon the, like, death rites, but he also starts writing all this down. Only the two men witnessed the, her last hours. The maester forbid all others, including the king and queen, from entering. Benefer gave um, Arya milk of the poppy and then redu to reduce her fever and immersed her into a tub of ice, but nothing seemed to help. We'll get back to that tub of ice. Um, she had arrived at the Red Keep in the morning by the hour of the bat uh, after sunset. Septim Barth announced that Arya had died. She was cremated later that day. So let's get into what happened. So uh, Benefer 
um, left no account. Like I said, Benifer kind of sucks at writing stuff down of Arya's death or Arya, Arya's death. But according to an account in Bar's private papers, Arya's fever was one unlike anything he had ever seen before. The septum described her as burning with red hot skin, having barely an ounce of flesh on her bones, appearing gaunt and starved. He reported that the swellings moving uh, moved underneath her skin. Um, yeah, wow. Um, possibly searching for a way to escape and causing a great pain. He wrote, I pray I shall soon forget some of the things she whispered. Yeah, we don't get to hear what she whispered, but they were awful, I guess. And that she often begged for death. It seemed to Barth as if Aria um, was cooking from within. Her flesh grew darker until it resembled pork cracklings. Jeez. Smoke came from her mouth, nose, and it grew darker until it resembled... Oh, wait, where was I? And Oh, I'm not going to read that. Okay, cool. Um, Yeah. Smoke came from places. Um, Aria's eyes um, cooked within her skull until they burst. Jeez. When the princess um, was lowered into the bathtub of ice, slimy, unspeakable things making horrible sounds emerged from um, under her skin. Um, one of his... One, um, it said uh, one of his arms. One, I, all right, I don't know what I was trying to type, but the creatures, um, of heat and fire, um, died from the cold water of the ice. So one was as big as of his arm. I knew that. Maybe that's what I was trying to write. The origins of the creatures, uh, that lived inside Area Targaryen, um, are unknown, but Barr speculated, um, that Balerion not. Area had chosen the destination as likely not the likely the only living creature that would have been uh, that would have known Valeria before it was destroyed um, in the doom. Valerian had returned home um, when the accursed creatures had found their way inside Arya Lip. Or whatever you know what I'm trying to say. Um, Valerian the Black Dread likely is the one who chose Valeria, and um, that's probably where she picked up these horrible things inside. I should have gave a trigger warning before I read that slide, and I completely feel like a jerk now, so I'm really sorry if that was a little rough. And, um, yeah, it was a little rough. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, I, sh I should have warned beforehand. Um, complete, complete blame on my part. I did a trigger warning in the other video, and I completely forgot this one. All right. Um, so sorry about that. Um, the uh, Shivers. Yay! We're going from that awful stuff. So now we're done talking about Arya Targaryen. Now we're back to, um, we're here to talk about Benefer. And what do we have? A plague! You get, Maester Week is fun. Jeez. All right. Um... The Shivers is a disease um, which has plagued Westeros on several occasions. The Shivers struck Westeros in 59 AC. That's what we're talking about here. During the first year of a, an especially cruel winter plagued by widespread famine. The um, first cases of the Shivers um, started in the eastern parts of the Seven Kingdoms, moving their way across Blackwater Bay and up the Blackwater Rush. Um, hitting the islands of the Crownlands, off, off the Crownlands, including Dragonstone and Dripmark. From uh, there, the disease spread across the lands. Um, Old Town lost a quarter of its population, in King's Land, but King's Landing was hit the hardest of all. Benefer was one of the victims, so he died of it. He died after uh, um, serving at Grand Maester for a total of 15 years under two different kings. Half of King's um, Jaehaerys' small council died, along with um, many of the lords of the great houses. A third of the maesters of the citadel and of uh, and at the high septum. Jeez, a septum. Um, King Jaehaerys' own six-year-old daughter, Princess Daenerys, fell ill as well and died a day and a half after first complaining about having a cold. Elisar was 20 years younger than Benefer when he succeeded him as Grand Maester. There you go. Um, I still got one more slide. 
which we are going to talk more about Arya Targaryen. Um, once again, sorry about not doing that trigger warning. Um, I should have. And uh, yeah, um, let's do it. Let's do this last slide. He's he died of the shivers. What a great life, you know. <laughs> you got to deal with Magar. You got to deal with this whatever happened to Arya Targaryen, and then um, then you die of the plague. <laughs> All right, what killed Arya? Even though Benefer was around for a long time, um, the the only mystery he's really a part of is Arya Targaryen. Turns out every Song of Ice and Fire creator, creator has talked about this. Not every. I'm being facetious here, but a lot of them. Um, I'm being hyperbolic. I'm being hypertonic. Um, I believe that um, Balery the Dread <laughs> um, flew to the ruins of Valyria, but I, um, I don't know why. Like I said, everyone and their mom has a video about this. So if I can only suggest a couple, I'd say go watch Fireworms and The Strange Case of Area Targaryen by Quinn's Ideas. If you guys don't know Quinn's Ideas, he doesn't really do a song about some fire stuff anymore. He's kind of moved on to covering Dune and some other really cool stuff. I'm still subscribed to him. He's fantastic. Um, and yeah, if you want to have a a really good in-depth look at what's going on with Arya Targaryen. Um, I suggest that video. And then if you want something a little more fun and goofy, um, Arya Targaryen is scary by Interesting Nerd Club. And um, yeah, between the fun one, that the Interesting Nerd Club's always really fun, right? And then the really well done um, look of Quinn's ideas, they can, they both of them are better videos than I can do for you. Right, so I will put links in the description of both Quinn's ideas video and um, um, the INC video. So yeah, there you guys go. Maester Week. When I planned Maester Week, I didn't think it was gonna be so dark, <laughs> and I didn't really think it. I didn't notice it until I started filming them, and I was like, "Oh man, Kerwin's a little dark." I'm like, "Oh, Coleman's gonna be dark too." Oh, Bedford's gonna be. <laughs> If you guys want me to do another Maester Week, please let me know, and I will try to come up with some more upbeat Maesters next time. Oh, I'll think about that next time. I'll be smarter next time. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we made it out of uh, Maester Week, and um, yeah, that's it. Do all that YouTube stuff, and um, thank you, yeah, for all your support and everything. I will be sure to put... The um the area Targaryen videos from both Quinn's idea and um Quinn's ideas and the interest in your club down in the description. That's all I got. Peace.